a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? How will that help me? Martha, the Lord answered, you have to do only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and will not be taken away from her. that kept ringing in my head 
as I was thinking about this, was Proverbs 12, verse 25. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. And that's it. Thank you. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you so much for the gifts that you give us. We pray that we give those back to you in the form of worship, that we are good stewards of what you've given us. And Lord, we work for your kingdom in all ways here in our lives. In your name, amen. Our second scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 17 through 27. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming... She went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Pretty amazing turnaround there for Martha, who kind of gets the bad rap for being busy when Jesus visits. Now Martha turns and acknowledges Jesus as the one who has the power even over death, and who gives the promise of resurrection. What incredible faith. Our next message is from Kelsey Brown. Kelsey, thank you for presenting the message. Hi, I'm Kelsey. So most people feel like that in the public school systems, there's no religion. And that's where people are wrong. I'm a freshman at Marquette High School, and I see examples of Jesus in my school all around me every day. All you have to do is look. Take the SCA, for example, like Will said. It stands for Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and it's a way for kids who spend their lives practicing sports to kind of come together and talk about their sports and God all together and help get a better understanding. So, some kids may just go over the socializing because, you know, their friends are going, but if they go to a few meetings, then they'll realize, they'll see God's grace if they haven't seen it before. So, I think that the FCA is a great example of Jesus. And next, I'm a cheerleader at Marquette, and we've had a lot of sign-up sheets lately to sign up for different mission work. And last Sunday, I went to a dinner for homeless men and women. And so we sat with them and we talked, and I came to realize that we made those people's day. And like, this wasn't anything that was required for the cheerleaders to do. You could sign up for whatever you want to. You could even just go and work with somebody at McDonald's and it was considered mission work. But just a handful of girls from my cheer squad went to go sit and eat with these people, and it was really amazing how much we helped them. And it wasn't anything huge, it was just something that we were able to do. And the act of being Jesus in school doesn't have to be huge. For example, every Friday we have this thing on TV called MHS TV, and it's different like things about our school and outside of school, around the area, and it's a way for people to kind of understand what's happening. And so a couple Fridays ago they advertised a fashion show for children with cancer, and it was a charity putting it on. And the school didn't make any donations or anything, but the fact that they got the, world, the word out made all the difference. Similarly, some people say, I want to help, but I don't know how. And some would say to that, well, that doesn't really matter, you know, you're not actually going out and helping, so what does it matter that you want to? But honestly, the fact is, is that they want to make a difference. Not everybody has FCA or Marquette Cheer or Youth Group or something to help them get involved. So just the fact that they want to, all they need is just a little push and some help, and they can get there. So... 
Jesus is in our school in many ways. He's working through us. He's working around us. You just have to look through, 